Okay, so the question is from a pre-cut glass. A communications tower is located at the top of a steep hill as shown. Well, it was not shown. There was no image included. So I went ahead and drew up a diagram that would work for this picture. Okay, here's my steep hill. I just drew a pointy hill essentially um, to simplify the picture. And the angle of inclination is the hill is 76 degrees. So here's my tower in the blue. And the angle of inclination is the angle from the x-axis to the line in question. So this is the line of my hill in question. And then I drew the height, the altitude from the tippy top of my hill down to the ground and just the other side of my hill. So it kind of looks like a hill. Okay, and then um, again, there's my tower. And let's see, a guy wire is to be attached to the top of the tower and to the ground. Okay, so here's the guy wire in orange. Top of the tower all the way to the ground. Um, it could be located really anywhere on the hill, but the easiest place to draw it was literally the ground. 156 meters downhill from the base of the tower. Okay, so that's another thing I can fill in here. That the length of this hill where it connects to the wire is 156 meters. Okay. The angle formed by the guy wire is 10 degrees. Okay, so I did this the wrong way the first time since I did not have a reference picture, but I fig figured out what I did wrong. And so the angle formed by the guy wire is the one up here to the tower, the guy wire to the tower, okay, 10 degrees. Find the length of the cable required for the guy wire. Okay, so we're looking for this over here. I'm just gonna call it G for guy wire length. Looking for that guy right here. Now, I see triangles. I see things I don't know. I see some angles. So I'm going to think automatically law of sines and law of cosines. Okay, in order to find all the information I need. And I drew this altitude strategically in order to have a little bit more information and reference for my picture. So I don't have enough information with just one angle and one side. I need at least one more piece to be able to start solving this, okay? So I forgot to write the angle in. So I know that this angle to the black line here of my hill is 76 degrees, but I also know that the right triangle made by going from the very bottom of the hill up this altitude to the top of the tower and then down the orange line um, is another triangle, including, um, you know, some information here. So I know 76 degrees of that is up to the black line. But I also know this angle up here at the top of that other, that bigger right triangle is 10. So I can find this little sliver down here. So these other two angles must also add up to 90. And that means that 76 plus 10 is 86. So that means this little sliver has to be 4 degrees. Okay. Now I can start solving things because I found one more angle. And actually I can find another angle given this information, even though I could probably go ahead and start, but this angle right here, I can also find. So the angle between the hill and the tower because I know the other two angles of the triangle. So the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So that means that 180 minus 10 is one. 70 minus 4 is 166, okay? 
And now we can go on to our solving step. Now that we have a lot as much information as we can get as possible just from the diagram. Okay, so going on to my board two. So using the law of signs, I can find the height of the tower. Okay, because the sine of an angle over its opposing length is equal to the a different side of an angle over its opposing length. Okay, and so if I look back at my diagram, I know the angle across from T, okay, which is four, and I want to find T so that I can find where the top of the wire is connecting. So I can use the information, all right? And the other piece of information I know is the length of the hill which is across from this angle of 10. So I set up my law of signs, solve for T, put it into a calculator, make sure your calculator is in degrees, and this is the value I get, okay? And then once I know T, I have this side here, this side here, and all the angles I need because I needed to know the angle. In order to use a law of cosines, I need to know the angle across from the side in question, which is G, my orange line. So it's a good thing I found that earlier and didn't need to find it now. Okay, so I go back and I use my law of cosines. The side I want to know squared is equal to the two sides I know each squared minus two times the two sides I know cosine the angle across and this is a error here the angle across from the side I wish to know okay now don't forget to square root both sides so that you're finding G and not the square of G and if you do that you get this number 217.335 so that is the length of the guy wire and that's subject to any um, rounding that might be asked of you in this specific problem, but I would leave it like this for now. Okay. So again, you can reference back and forth. Here's the image one more time. Go back and forward as you need to be able to see the image and back to the two calculations. Okay. I think the hardest part of this problem is actually just the setup and then realizing law of sines and cosines. So once you get your problem set up or if it was already drawn for you, as the problem indicates it's as shown, you can simply, um, not simply, but you need to be able to recognize when you can use law of sine and law of cosines. And they're really just, anytime you're working with triangles that are not right triangles and you've got some things you know and some things you don't know, you should pull these two um, laws out and reference them and see if you can figure out you know, what can I figure out and obviously in this one I had to use some extra information by drawing a secondary bigger triangle that was a right angle so that I could find this tiny little sliver so the law of cosines and law of sines plus you know getting a little creative with thinking okay how can I use some right triangles to my advantage mm -hmm.